Hi there, and a very warm welcome to Season 5, Episode 14 of People Soup. It's Ross McIntosh here. What would you describe as your, your personal values in your illustration work? I think you've touched on them, but I'd just like to tease them out a little bit more. I think, like you said, love. I think there's mm. a lot of love that goes into it, but I think, like you said, connection and community, obviously creativity. Mm. Yeah, I guess compassion. I hope that kind of comes through you know, in what I'm communicating and things. And fun and humour, I hope, as well. Yeah. I think that they all shine through, and I love that you, your first value was love. Yeah. I'd just like to say big virtual hug for that. I think it's amazing what you're doing. Pea Supers, this episode is revisiting a favourite conversation with a favourite person. Yes, I've delved into the People Soup archives, and I wanted to share with you my chat with Lou Gardner, my act ante, your act ante, our inspiration. People Soup is an award-winning podcast where we share evidence-based behavioural science, particularly from contextual behavioural science, in a way that's practical, accessible and fun to help you glow to work a bit more often. Peace Soup as this episode is an encore, revisiting a favourite from the People Soup archives, and it's a classic with lots of personal meaning for me and many others. As much for us all to learn from Lou through her personal values and what she role modelled for us all. Her impact in supporting others through her art continues, even though she's no longer with us. And her light shines bright. Lou, I miss you, and I think of you every time I see a blackbird in our garden, which is pretty darned often. What I'm doing through People Soup is trying to take a stand for what's possible at work and show people how they can build that possibility for themselves. For me, what Lou illustrates and role models for us in this chat is her creative connection with her values, which gave her direction, And she also showed us the way she relates to her old friend anxiety whilst courageously pursuing her purpose. Let's just scoot over to the news desk for Reviews Are In for part two of my chat with Gabriella Brown. Lisa Falkingham on Twitter said, Thank you for another great two-parter. I love the title. And yes, we can't just leave part of who we are at the office door. So resonant and relevant for where we are right now. And again on Twitter, Helen McGillivray said, Just had a listen to this on the drive home. Look forward to reading the book. I was told at nursing uni not to get emotional, and I remember thinking, eek! I still hear these beliefs being carried by people in the workplace today. Thank you, Gabriella. Indeed, thank you, Gabriella, and thanks to everyone who listened, rated and reviewed, talked about it with a friend, recommended the podcast, because with your help, we can reach more people with stuff that could be useful. But for now, get a brew on and have a listen to a special encore with Lou Gardner, my act ante, your act ante, our act ante. Hey, P Supers, I am virtually here. I wish I was there, but I am virtually here with Louise Gardner, also known as act ante. Lou, Louise, Act Auntie, welcome to People Soup. Hi, Ross. Thank you very much for inviting me on your show. I'm, I'm delighted you, you were willing to join us, so thank you very much. Now, you'll probably be used to the format. I just want to start, Louise, with a summary of what my research department have gleaned about you. You just absorb this and see what you think. Uh, they may not have got everything right. First of all, they've noticed that you hang out with some right groovy people, and these include Dandelion... Some pirates who are apparently from Mars, big bears, <laughs> prairie dogs, yetis, mermaids, and seals. That's right, yes. <laughs> Blimey, so, so that's all true, is it? I it did. is true, it is true, yes. Crikey. Sometimes you could have been seen wearing bunny ears. <laughs> and exactly true. And making reference to carrots as well. I am guilty. Crikey. And I have personally witnessed this, you wearing bunny ears whilst cutting shapes on the dance floor. Yes. And I think you may have borrowed said ears while you uh, were cutting shapes. 
Uh, I'm just hoping <laughs> against hope. <laughs> no photographic evidence. <laughs> yeah, I, I suspect if anyone's listening who was there, they might unfortunately um, provide I that. I, I think I may have video evidence. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> All right, we can talk about terms for non-release of that off mic. <laughs> um, what I noticed, Louise, about you is I met you for the first time in Dublin. Yeah. Although we'd been buddies on Twitter for a while before that. We had, yeah. And there was this, I'm waving my arms around, peace supers, I'm not sure why, but there was this instant connection and warmth from you. And this oh. is really something quite beautiful. I'd like to thank you for that, 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 that you bring that to... Uh, human interaction oh, and, right back at you i feel completely the same and i'd also like to to acknowledge your your value of generosity we're going to get into your art in a bit more detail but you share so much of it for in the act world and for the act practitioners and those interested with such generosity i'd like to just do a big woo for that i'm not going <laughs> to shout a proper woo because it'll probably go off the mic scale but <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> and, and another value I've spotted is courage. Oh, I, I hope a tiny bit. Yes. And why have I spotted this? I think the best example is hearing that you, you went on an expedition recently and you cycled your bike. I did, Margaret. <laughs> your, your bike, Margaret, to the station. Managed the perils of trying to lock up your bike when there were no bike racks. And then travelled to meet our friend Mary, yeah. who, took, who took you open water swimming. That's right. Yes, that was definitely committed action. Blimey. <laughs> tell, me, tell me a bit more about that. That was like, was it the sea? Was it a lake? Was it... Yeah, it's a marine pool. So it is seawater that comes in and then just stays in this pool. So I think it was minus four degrees. <laughs> we did it. So Mary is amazing. She, she swam the channel. So she is, she's so inspirational anyway. And um, yeah, I thought we were meeting for coffee and she said, oh, I thought we, we could go swimming in the sea. It was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Everything in my body and my literally straight away was like, no, thank you. She was like, oh, you'll, you'll love it. And I just thought, you know what? If I did that, I'd be so chuffed with myself. That would be a real achievement to do that because I'm actually not a good, very, very good swimmer. I'm scared of deep water. <laughs> I don't like the cold. Everything about it was like resistance. And I thought, you know what? And I'd been reading a, an act thing that week about willingness being a switch that's either on or off. There's no in between. Mm. Um, and I just thought, you know what? Maybe I should just do it. Yeah. And so I did. And yeah, it was very, very cold, but <laughs> the, <laughs> but it was an amazing experience. And that sense of accomplishment of actually achieving something afterwards, it was a real buzz until Mary said, the next 10 minutes after you've got out of the most dangerous, is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey. Well, thank you for giving us such a beautiful example of, of willingness there and, and values-led action. I love it. I think it, I think each of those little things, because each I think it was that thing, as Mary was saying, like once you've done that, when you do something else, you think, you know, if I did that, I can do this, and I think it does build that, you know, little memory bank of resilience. I think. Mm. So, so when's your next open water swim? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Some, I will definitely do it again. Definitely will. Yeah. I think I think Mary will persuade you. Yes, I think so. She's I'm, very persuasive. So the last bit of my research department, they said, oh, they said they thought that in a sort of political way, Louise might not want to turn up on your little podcast now because she's actually appeared recently <laughs> on the British Broadcasting Corporation brackets Somerset in a radio interview. That's right, yes. And I thought... Uh, you... In at the deep end again, literally, my first interview was a live radio interview, so that was pretty scary. But using my act skills, I made room. Oh, brilliant. And I listened. Some feelings. Oh, yeah. And I listened and thought it was fantastic. Oh, thank you. And again, my inner critic had lots to say about it. But yes, yeah. using my act skills, I could thank it for its helpful advice. <laughs> yeah. My inner critic was going, look at you with a tin pot mic and your, oh. and your dodgy headphones. It's hardly like BBC Somerset, but um, I've got over that, I think. Now, that's, that's what my research department have gleaned. And we'll put the link to your, if we may, to your BBC Somerset interview as well okay. in the show notes. So, Louise, I wonder if you'd like to just introduce yourself a bit to the P-Supers. Tell us a bit about 
what you do, how you got into art, and give us a bit of a flavour of what's got you to where you are now. Um, well, I've been a freelance illustrator for just over 28 years, mainly in the children's book industry. Also did comics and food packaging and toy packaging and stationery and things over the years as well. It's, it's been a really lovely um, industry to work in. But I'd always had struggles with anxiety and was always looking for something to help me get rid of it. <laughs> mm. a bit lying the problem <laughs> of trying to get rid of it. And I listened to a podcast uh, called um, Not Another Anxiety Show and they mentioned uh, Happiness Trap on there. I thought I'd just Google it and it came up with uh, Russ's online course. Mm. Um, and so I did that and I just found it life-changing it was so helpful and because it was so visual I just wanted to draw everything <laughs> mm. and so that's what started me getting into doing drawing with act and things as well but yeah I've always been creative that's probably one of my favorite values literally don't remember not drawing my dad was a printer and so he used to bring home loads of paper <laughs> so I was always drawing and things so yeah it was kind of like always been the love of my life so yeah really oh that's wonderful to hear and 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 you talk about russ like first name terms like <laughs> hey so that just for our pcbs who aren't sure that is i can confirm it's russ harris uh, yes sorry yes yes your, your showbiz friend <laughs> <laughs> yes. well yeah i was very lucky lots but so basically i did the course and just i found it so helpful and that he had a Facebook support group for everyone who'd done the course. And so I think at the beginning, it was just trying to remember all the skills. And now it doesn't seem like a lot, but just remembering those, those mm. core processes and just like, well, what am I not using? What am I, what am I have, I've forgotten? And so I just drew a little visual map of a little character walking through the processes of like the eight weeks. And it was for me to put on my wall, really, just to remind myself every day. And, and I posted it in the Facebook group to see if people might find it helpful as well. And the feedback was just so amazing. You know, people being really supportive and saying they were going to print it out and things. And Russ is really generous with his time. He's always in the group anyway, you know, helping people out. And he saw them and got in contact and said, you know, he really liked it and he'd like to commission me to do maps for the eight-week course. So that was obviously a dream job <laughs> to do. Um, so, yeah, so each um, week has got a little visual walkthrough. So when people have finished each week, they've just got like something... Mm. quickly look at and just as a little refresher of all the skills that they've learned because there's a lot of information about it so. wow i love i love hearing this story of how you came upon the course through through the podcast yes yeah see it's such a great medium yes oh my gosh no absolutely I, yeah it's so connecting and i yeah i listen to a lot of podcasts mm. I love a podcast <laughs> and, and enormous respect to russ harris who was one of the primary leaders in getting act out there to to people it, it's phenomenal the work he does the first book i read in on act was the happiness trap yeah it, like you said i think for so many people that is how they discover act through russ's work and then i just was so enthusiastic about it i just thought how does more people not know about this because whenever i told people about it no one had heard about it and i just thought God, this is so important this is so helpful i could just see mm. i could help so many people and then because i was boring friends talking about it so much <laughs> so i said <laughs> well you know could you teach it and i thought could i teach it i I don't know. And it was just like, as soon as that had kind of got in my mind, and then I saw that Russ was coming to, so that was um, September 2017, I did the course. Um, and then he was coming to London in July 2018 to do Act Made Simple and Act for Trauma workshops. So I did those. And then since then, I've done some more training in Birmingham and um, Bristol um, with Louise Hayes and Joe Oliver. And yeah, and I just kind of can't get enough of it. And I'm hopefully going to be doing life coaching next year in Wow. Using act, so yeah. Oh, wonderful. You mean you as, as the coach? Yes, yes. So I've been working with a friend who's a coach and we've got another little project as well that we're hoping to roll out maybe in 2020 with group coaching and that as well. So, Oh, um, blimey, that's, that's phenomenal. I'm, I'm so delighted to hear that. I think coaching is an area where act just fits so well. Well, I just feel so passionate about it and just whatever, you know, there's, I don't know, just being able to pass on the information and help other people. Mm that might be feeling stuck because I think for me that's the whole thing I think a lot of people when you struggle with anxiety you think it, you take it so personally and think you're broken or weak and it's so not that you are just stuck and most of us just haven't been given the skills and I think once you've got the skills mm. I mean that can just be transformative. Thank you so much for your openness I think I certainly resonate with that as a sometimes I still feel like that very anxious child. Yes me too that, that, yeah 
And I think giving yourself a hard time for that. And I think, you know, the compassion element of ACT, you know, and, and you know, CFT has been so helpful as well because I was super hard on myself mm. and just learning those self-compassion skills, you know, and, and that common humanity. And I, I think that's one of the things I love about ACT as well, that people, you know, share their experiences and you see all these amazing inspirational people who've had their own s- stories you know, mm. with anxiety and you're thinking, you know, wow, if these people are doing that, you know, that you can do all these amazing things and still have anxious feelings. <laughs> That's part of being human. And that is just liberating. Mm, I love the way you describe this because yeah, it's, it's about we're doing this. Now you put your work out there yeah. in a way, this is us putting a, a collaborative piece of work out there. Yeah. And it's not without anxiety doing this. Yeah, absolutely. And, like you said, my mind was telling me all the things this morning, all the stupid things I was going to say. And, that, and like you said, but it's making room for those. And like you said, diffusion skills and, you know, noticing those stories and naming them and naming the body sensations. But like you said, in the, mm. the following our values and that's what gets you moving is actually something bigger than those feelings, something more important than those feelings. Yeah. I think what we've both got is this desire to share this further, to help more people discover this behavioral science yes absolutely because i think i mean it really is self-help as in once you've got the skills Mm. it's like having a little toolkit they're never going to go away you know it's just practicing and and using them and you know it's just so valuable i mean i really do think if you're taught at school (laughs) it would be life-changing yeah Mm. Yeah, and and it is getting into schools now in a a quite exciting way so crikey yeah i mean that yeah that would be amazing and like you said i think there is so much more of that people talking about emotions and you know people being a lot more open and like you said you know i think if you were maybe brought up to see you know like to suppress emotions that certain emotions were bad and that then you obviously are going to you know associate them with you know feelings of guilt or shame mm-hmm. and stuff and things and like just having that healthier open conversation about you know all all feelings welcome <laughs> yeah love that and can I take take you back just a little bit to, to when you were a child? You said yeah. your, your dad was a, a printer and he used to bring loads of paper home. So what were you drawing in those first days? Um, probably not very different <laughs> to the things that I've probably carried on drawing. Lots of little people characters, lots of cute animals, I think, like just making up my own little stories. Because um, my dad used to print books. That he actually used to print uh, Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, um, and he used to print, they used to print like children's books sometimes as well. So I had quite a lot of children's books. And to me, that was just kind of escape. Mm. And I think just, I just love those kind of other little worlds, you know, that you can just make up anything and you just can create that any world that you want. So I think just being able to draw that as well. Mm. Uh, yeah, just, I think, you know, you know, lucky enough to know lots of other illustrators and children's book writers. And I think we all have that common thing of, as children, we all had that kind of fantasy world where you'd escape and make up stories, either writing them or drawing them. Yeah. Oh, isn't that, isn't that wonderful that, that you could pursue that? Yes. Yeah. So, so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. I think if, when I was younger, I kind of didn't even think about it as being an option. I, I did a sort of general art and design course, but I don't think I, even then, it was just my kind of what I loved most, but not with a kind of end goal in mind. And then I had a fantastic tutor there who said, you know, you do know you could go on and do a degree. And I was like, really? <laughs> and mm. thought about doing that. And then I did a, a course um, in Wolverhampton, which is actually, the title of it is actually very fits with what I'm doing now, which was visual communication. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so it was graphic design, photography and illustration, and I specialised in illustration. And then when I left, I went off to London to seek <laughs> fame and fortune, but, you know, to look for work because all publishers were pretty much based in London then and mm. this was pre-internet because I'm that old. Um, and so <laughs> you were you literally physically, you know, seeing publishers with your portfolio, which was brilliant. I mean, great to meet so many amazing mm. people. Yeah, and hoping that somebody would pick out your work and give you a job and... And I was lucky enough to, yeah, get, I think one of my first jobs was um, with the BBC Play Days magazine, drawing Dilly the Dinosaur. <laughs> which... Dilly the Dinosaur. <laughs> oh, have you got any archival clips we could put on our... I might have somewhere. It's going back a bit, but yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, so then it was just, yeah. So I do feel very blessed to have been, mm. you know, working in this industry for so long. So. And, and when I listened to your appearance on BBC Somerset... Mm-hmm. 
I heard mention of Pingu. Yes, yes, I used to, yes. I was going to say they, all the children's magazines then, they used to yeah, do tweenies and Pingu and Noddy and things. So yeah, I used to do little stories for them and things like that as well. So yeah, it was fun times. And, and when you were a kid, did you enter like art competitions and stuff? Not really. I was quite shy, I think. So mm. no, not that I, yeah, I kind of, I, I school and things and that we'd, kind of do things you know they'd have a thing where you you know design the school christmas card or that kind of thing maybe but not not really louise it's so exciting to hear how it, your career developed because i often talk to people in coaching or in team settings and talk about creativity and adults are so quick to go oh well i'm not creative yes i think everybody is creative and like you said when people always say oh I couldn't do what you do but I always say it is just practice and people absolutely can do it you know and it doesn't have to be in that medium and it's just that expression I think all arts you know dancing singing painting drawing photography you know it everybody's got a creative outlet mm. you know? and I think uh, that's so important and I think what we often fail to recognize or or omit from our consideration of being uh, creative is that that practice. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's not like you woke up one day with a pencil and thought, hey, I'm going to be an illustrator. Yeah. This is this is hours and days and months and years and years of practice. Yes. Yeah. And uh, same as, like you said, if you're going to play a piano or something, none of us are going to be good. <laughs> well, I don't think I'd ever be good at that. But like you said, it is just putting in. Mm. But, you know, this, so it's having the enjoyment like wanting that end thing but I think like you said as well lots of people do you know like the coloring in books and stuff and things it doesn't have to be you know I think there's still so much pleasure mm. to be just in that moment you know choosing colors or you know whatever it is or you know there's so many creative outlets you know baking and cooking and you know yeah. they're all creative you know like yeah. just creating something from nothing almost you know that is I think it's a, a quite a profound human thing to I do think, this yeah and I think it's one of the I mean it's such a unique human thing isn't it I think mm. I mean, oh absolutely yeah and the best of you know society when you look at like the times where human beings have actually managed to not fuck everything up <laughs> do you know what I mean but like societies what you know they were about you know theatre and sport and painting and singing and dancing it is those mm. creative arts I think that are so important and very sad I think that we're kind of losing those in schools yeah. Because I think, you know, there's, I think for mental health and that, they are really good. I mean, we need those, you know, they are about pleasure, really. I mean, there are how many things in life that just are about joy, expressing mm. pleasure and joy. I mean, like, that is what they're about, really, aren't they? And, and sharing love, I guess, you know, like baking and things. Mm. People put love into those things or singing a song or writing a poem. I mean, it is an expression of, that sounds a bit <laughs> strange, I guess. But, you know, I think that is what creativity is, really. Mm, yeah, let's get that out there. Yeah. <laughs> what could you do that's creative today, P Supers? Yeah. If it's writing a limerick or making a cake or making cheese on toast, yeah. that could be an act of love. Yes. And well, our lovely friend Rose, I mean, she made me the most amazing embroidery quilt. And that was just, oh, I was so touched. There was so, you know, to me, that was, that's love, mm. you know, and it's just like so, all the values of kindness and generosity and love and creativity and that. Yeah. Mm. Now, Lou, being a pea super, you'll know that I ask my guests for a song. And this is a, a song that you'd be happy to use to announce your arrival in all life scenarios for the next few weeks, whether it's you arriving to meet Mary, whether it's you entering a room to meet friends or whatever. Now, I did tell you this in advance, so I don't know if you've had a chance to think about a, a song. I did, and I am hoping you will sing it. Oh, that's crikey. my favourite bit of your show. Is when oh, you no. <laughs> No pressure then, though. Uh, my song is Katy Perry Raw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you devil. <laughs> right. Um, and can I ask, before I try and drag through my memory network... You might have to drop that back in with you singing along. No, no, I'm going to give it a go right now. Yeah. But, um, why this one? Um, for me, it kind of... I guess sums up two things. I think how ACT has impacted my life because for me it is being really empowering. That's the word I use a lot, but I think with my work, you know, I want it to help empower other people. 
because it does feel like it's given my life back on lots of levels I think so it feels almost like a new improved me so it is that kind of thing of like wanting to live life to the full and like saying you know here I am and being brave I think that kind of tiger is courageous I think you know for a lot of time I was more like a little little mouse and I still mm. love that little mouse bit it's in my top pocket but, <laughs> but I think you know that kind of tiger but I think with some of the stuff that I've learned about with CFT we have a, a you know those compassionate kind of companions and there's like a fierce protector and for me that this kind of like sums up that as well that kind of fierce mm. protective side so are you going to join me in having a go here <laughs> not sure <laughs> okay let me think I want to check I've got the right one first uh, 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 uh. Is that, does it go <laughs> yeah. something has it got that we're, in it we're, we're probably not allowed to play any of it are we because well I'm, n- I'm never really sure i normally i think no one's gonna sue me for thinking i'm gonna i would offer to sing it but my singing voice mm. is probably not anything that anyone wants to hear yeah. well yeah, you <laughs> so and me both be my next committed action yeah i do go to yeah. singing i do go to a, a singing group so that is committed action well for, secret for enjoyment <laughs> i could feel a christmas album coming on <laughs> oh my gosh I think that sounds good. What act, do you think? The act reason for Christmas. The reason act for Christmas. Right. When when are we um when are we <laughs> like it'll be like playing... live aid. Yeah, well, <laughs> like the sound of this. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, with thinking, guests. Yeah, we, we've got plenty oh yeah, we've got a lot of guests. I think you should do that. Or can you imagine that? We could get more together like on a, a massive group Zoom, we could all do a <laughs> Oh my like goodness. A live aid style. You've got to do that. No, you've said it. Right. That, that'll have to be for next Christmas, I think. <laughs> yes. Just reining in our ambition slightly. <laughs> but I'm thinking, we are the world. <laughs> yes. We are the children. Because I always want to put my um, hand on my ear like that. <laughs> now, P Supers, it may have come as a surprise that I couldn't quite nail the song in the recording session for this podcast. Katy Perry's not high on my playlist for this year. So... I'm now going to present a little part of it to you, and I think there's a message for us all here, and I'd like to dedicate this to my friend Lou. Right, pea supers, I am ready as I'll ever be, so let me just have a sip of tea. Ah, And let's crack on. I used to bag my tongue and hold my breath Scared to rock the boat and make a mess So I sit quietly Agree politely I guess that I forgot I had a choice I let you push me past the breaking point I stood for nothing So I fell for everything You held me down But I got up Already brushing off the dust You hear my voice You hear that sound like thunder gonna shake the ground You held me down, but I got up Whoop! Get ready cause I've had enough I see it all, I see it now I got the eye of the tiger, a fighter Dancing through the fire Cause I am a champion And you're gonna hear me roar louder Louder than a lion, cause I am a champion And you're gonna hear me roar You're gonna hear me roar Now I'm floating like a butterfly Stinging like a bee, I earned my stripes I went from zero to my own hero. So, P Supers, you hear my voice? You hear that sound? It's like thunder, it's going to shake the ground. Enough of this. Let's go back to my conversation with Louise. Thank you. Thank you for that. And <laughs> I now always imagine that song with you. Yes. When, I, when I, I see I think you. When I'm doing something, that is my kind of like, I put it on when I'm doing something that, like, come on, we can do mm. this. <laughs> mm, thank you. So I think, Louise, you said your first act-related illustration was mm. the illustrating the eight-week course. Yes, that's and right. And is that yeah. is that the first one you put out there as well? 
I think it uh, was, it, uh, yes, that, so that first little walkthrough one, I think that was the first one that I put out and then I obviously started working on Russ's, but then that didn't kind of come out till later. Mm. I'm trying to think what the first one was. I think I did like a compassion one. There was a lovely quote at Alicia Goldstein quote. Right. It was a bear and bunny uh, sat on a log. Are we going to get it completely wrong? But it's like if we just all put our hand on our heart for a moment, it would be a moment well spent. It's that's mm. not completely right. But it was I, so I did that, and I think I did the beach ball one mm. you know, about how we try to suppress <laughs> thoughts and feelings, and they'll just come back and smack mm. you in the face. <laughs> um, and then I think I started um, working on um, the animation stuff. Because a friend was very kindly contacted me and said, you know, I've seen this program. I think that would be great for your work that you're putting out. Um, yeah, and found this um, program so I could start animating like some of my drawings and, and things. And mm. I think maybe, I don't know, one of the first ones, I think when I discovered RFT, that just brought so much together for me. And it was just like such a huge aha moment. <laughs> and I kind of had this mind map of this illustration I wanted to do. So that was a real labour of love, I think, creating that one. Mm. I think that's one of the things I'm most proud of that I've produced as Act Dancy. And the feedback for that has just been amazing. I think it's something like 12,000 views or something crazy at the moment. So, yeah. Crikey. So that's the the RFT illustration. Um, animation, yeah. So animation, I'm, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So it, I think it's about eight minutes long, something like that, but just a, like, a very simple walkthrough of kind of, what RFT is a very simple version, I have to say. Mm. Simple. But but look how you're making that accessible. And for those of you who aren't sure what RFT is, it's it's called relational frame theory, and yeah. that underpins ACT. Yeah. It's traditionally seen as oh my gosh, RFT is too difficult for me. Yes, and it was just for me, it was just seeing how we create these thought patterns and and just. And, you know realizing there's no undo button and you know and how we can get caught up in it you know it could be so sticky but you know having that self with context you know being able to step away from it and you know and that self-compassion of knowing it's not your fault you know all that information that we mm. when we're younger that we take on board as you know in our thought repertoire <laughs> you mm. know like you said of when we're stressed or scared you know we probably always go back to those automatic thoughts you know those inner critic thoughts and things and it's really that act anti approach it's got that simplicity and warmth but it's really informative and i'm not surprised it's had twelve thousand views hopefully we'll get some more because yeah. people will want to go and <laughs> look at it yeah what would you describe as your your personal values in your illustration work i think you've touched on them but i just like to tease them out a little bit more i think like you said love i think there's mm. a lot of love that goes into it but i think like you said connection and community obviously creativity mm. yeah i guess compassion i hope that kind of comes through you know in what i'm communicating and things and um, fun and humor i hope as well yeah i think that they all shine through and i love that you your first value was love yeah i just like to say big virtual hug for that i think it's amazing what you're doing and i, I think that's the thing that everyone i meet or the experts as i like to call them you know nice. that is for it is that passion but it is love it's so much care for people you know and wanting to help people you know mm. so that it always feels you know it feels like such an amazing community and, and we talked about putting putting our stuff out there your stuff audio stuff whatever out there as a courageous act is there anything that gets in the way of you thinking right i've done this illustration i'm i'm gonna share it i think there is there's always that kind of self-doubt i think when you put anything out you know because it is very personal isn't it and you're obviously thinking what are other people going to think of this or you know they're going to be judging me which you know the human mind is always going to be judging so they will be judging but I think like you said as long as you feel that you're offering something you know of worth hopefully you know you know we were saying if like even if one person finds some value in it you know like you said of just trying to get communicate out there about act and stuff that if just one person finds it useful and goes on you know to help change their life for the better by using it then you know that's incredible i think if we were just trying to spread this message and spread it out mm. that's the important thing i think but yes I definitely do have those in a critic and i think you know like you said i think that's so normal like i said i'm very lucky to know lots of super talented illustrators whose work a lot of it i would just never be able to compare to and i know they have the same thoughts that they look on instagram mm. and look at other artists and think why do i even bother and you're like what how are you thinking that but i think we all have that mm. you know thing but maybe that's what motivates us to keep trying to keep improving as well so mm. maybe it's not a bad thing 
you know, if we thought we were super great, we'd never challenge ourselves to improve. I'm really excited to hear about all the, the learning you've done since coming across ACT as well. And also, the, for me, that the simplicity of an illustration can convey really complex messages in yes. a way that 10 pages of text can't. And, uh, yeah, and I think that's what I hoped as well. Like, you know, I think sometimes when people are feeling very anxious or depressed, it can feel overwhelming to read a book. You know, mm. And I think sometimes maybe just that a little picture or something might just make that little connection to maybe want them to read a bit more or just to have that, you know, make it a little bit more lighthearted mm. um, and things as well. But yeah, I'm an avid reader. That's one of my passions. I've got a ridiculous amount of books. <laughs> like you said, when I discovered ACT, it was just, yeah, my ACT library is quite big. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I just, it's so fascinating. I just love reading all the new research and, you know, people's takes on it. You know, there's always something new that you think, wow, I hadn't thought about that or just a fun way that someone's, you know, communicated something. Yeah, sometimes it's just what I love about your work is that sometimes it's just the perspective. Right. For me, it's the perspective and the, the distilling down in, in a really accessible and simple way that is like, blimey. <laughs> Thank you. Because I think we can hide behind words sometimes. Yes, and I think with like academia as well, it's, there's that kind of thing with papers to make them almost as wordy <laughs> as possible. Yeah. But I think sometimes it loses that essence and loses a lot of audience who probably think that isn't for me. And mm. you know, there's so much helpful information in there. Um, so like you said, it's just trying to get out to as a wider audience as possible, mm. isn't it? And I think and to make it an enjoyable experience to learn. P Supers, don't be alarmed because we'll, we'll put uh, links to Louisa's presence on various different websites and social media channels and shops <laughs> in the show notes for this. So you can go and admire, appreciate, learn from Louise's generosity in her work and also buy some stuff. I saw, some, I saw a tweet recently where you can have a hand-drawn personalized print yes i was doing some like christmas prints and that yeah and i've got a little red bubble shop now because people were asking whether they could buy it on things so i have done some things that you can buy on t-shirts and mugs and things if you so wished <laughs> wow but yeah and i've been lucky enough as well to be working with some experts on their books as well so i've got five books that are coming out well not my books but books that i've been lucky enough to collaborate with authors on that are all coming out in 2020 as well so i mean five books get you this is phenomenal oh, can i mention some more yes please yes. please well, do i was gonna say well one of them has just come out actually which is this one which is uh the act workbook for teens with ocd which is patricia's <gasps> owner i hope i've pronounced her Patricia's name, right? Dr. Z. Dr. Z. Yes. Oh, crikey. I so didn't realise you'd done the illustrations. Yeah. And then I'm working on uh, Your Anxiety Beast and You with Dr. Eric Goodman, which right. has been super, super fun to work on. Um, and Mindfulness and Acceptance Workbook for Self-Esteem, A Practical Guide to Build Self-Compassion and Self-Acceptance with Dr. Joe Oliver and Dr. Richard Bennett. Blimey. Um, and the Little Depression Workbook and the Little Anxiety Workbook with uh, Dr. Michael Sinclair. Wow. For all our super lovely friends. So that has been a joy to work with everybody. Goodness. Um, they're all, I'm super excited for them to come out for the general public because they're going to be all going to be amazing books. I think they're all going to be so helpful. So I've been lucky enough to see some of the content and yeah, I'm just thinking, wow, I would have loved to have read these books. I will be reading them, but you know, yeah. it's like when I was struggling and looking for something, Absolutely. they would have been so perfect, yeah. Oh, I, I didn't realise there was this depth of engagement <laughs> with the experts and crikey. Yeah, I think I've just been really lucky because like you said, I think we just, you know, like you said, that lovely kind of Twitter, mm. you know, kind of community going on. And I think having, like you said, meeting people at Dublin and, you know, mm. Birmingham and, and Bristol and that as well has been. Yeah. Now, I've got a question. Do, do you have any idea what your most popular work has been? Because I think we've had the animation, the RFT animation. Is there a, a static image that you think, oh, that's been mega popular? That's really resonated? Um, I think the little act map, the walkthrough, I think people have found that really helpful. And I had um, someone saying that they've used it in their workshops and, and used it as a mindfulness colouring in at the same time so people could take it nice. away. But yeah, I've had such lovely feedback because I've got an art group for like people who are using the artwork and I've had so many therapists saying they're using it in session or giving it to their clients to take away at the end and things. And I've had some people from the NHS saying they framed them up and, and things like that. And I've had amazing people translate them. So there's been loads of different translations now and stuff. 
Wow, look at the look at the impact you've made. Yeah, I do feel super lucky. I just it, it just feels so rewarding because I think, like you said, it is that. And I know Steve Hayes said that you know turning pain into purpose. You know, it's this mm. the anxiety which for so many years I saw as a kind of burden. Mm. You know, it's actually been a kind of turning point to discover this amazing thing and to be able to combine the art and act. It's like two things I feel so passionate about. Mm. So it feels a joy to be able to do it and then to be part of this amazing community you know, that have been so welcoming um, and kind to me. And, you know, Mm. and then to hear that that's actually helping people. Yeah, it's pretty dreamy. (laughs) And I'd just like to say, it ain't just luck. Oh, thank you. (laughs) So, Louise, you know, I like to ask my guests for a takeaway. Is there anything you would like to put out there for our P supers who are listening that maybe they could try or just reflect on? I think for me, it's just learning through ACT that you're not broken, you're just stuck, and that ACT can help you get unstuck. Um, And it's never too late. You can always learn new skills, and you can change and grow and evolve, and you don't have to just survive, you can thrive. And I think that's what ACT skills helps you do. Wow. Wow, you're giving me goosebumps there. (laughs) It's great to hear you say that, and it's also great to hear you say it's never too late. Yeah. I resonate with that so much because that's one of my unhelpful thoughts well, that I've left it all too me late too, me too and it's still like you said that is it's I've left a too late story is a, a loud one hell and yeah who knows the best might be yet to come who knows <laughs> wow Louise thank you so much for coming on the show I I'm so grateful for your generosity your what you share your openness and you're just a beautiful human being so thank oh. you for coming on the show thank you so much thank you And thank you for the raw song as well, uh, which kind of threw me slightly. (laughs) And any final thoughts from you? Well, yesterday I saw a quote by um, Dennis Turch, which I think kind of really ties in really well with that song that I'd chosen. Um, And his quote was, when you take your life back from anxiety, in a sense, you take back your whole world. This life is yours if you want it. And the cost is feeling your fear and taking action no matter what take back your world and live deeply. And for me, ACT skills shows you how to feel your fear. You're not tolerating it. You know, it's not just tolerating it. ACT skills will show you how to take that fear with you and to, you know, learn about values, to know how to go out into the world and create a life that you love. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much again, Louise. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Ross. It's been a pleasure. That's it, pea supers in the bag. It's so lovely to hear Lou again. Thanks, Henny. My invitation to you, pea supers, is to share what you loved about this episode. You can let me know on the socials, or drop me an email, or even a voice note on WhatsApp. If you like this episode of the podcast, please could you do three things. Number one, share it with one other person. Number two, subscribe to the podcast and give us a five-star review whatever platform you're on, and particularly if you're on Apple Podcasts. The Apple charts are really important in the podcast industry. And number three, share the heck out of it on the socials. This will all help us reach more people with stuff that could be useful. I love to hear from you, and you can get in touch at peoplesoup.pod at gmail.com. On Twitter, we are at peoplesouppod. On Instagram, at people.soup. And on Facebook, we are at peoplesouppod. Thanks to Andy Glenn for his spoon magic and Alex Engelberg for his vocals. Most of all, dear listener, thanks to you. Look after yourselves, peace supers, and bye for now. Because I could quickly find it for you if you like. But... <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> Hold on a second, just so you can do your warming up. Oh, me, 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 me. We need tapping away now. Uh, 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 uh. I can't just get a handle on how it starts. Okay. You're going to hear. Oh, oh, it's not going to be too loud. Oh, oh I'm hearing jungle noise. <laughs> yes. <laughs>